four or five days on from painting this, uh, it's, it's, it's taken a while because it's, it's oil based. Uh, but I've been patient. Um, if you want a good faster process, then try acrylic. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm happy that I waited here. So I've started now putting the jute on. Now this jute, an inch marked down, an inch from the top, and then wrap it round itself, just as you did with the prod on the crossbow, or what I did, I don't know if you did one as well. And then when we get to the bottom, down here where the actual split finishes, where we did our V cut, then we're gonna go past there, five wraps under the finger and tuck under itself. I'll explain and show you how to do that when I get there. Okay, so we are just past the actual split here. I've cut the cord, leave yourself about 12, 18 inches, and then wrap it uh, round, but then bring it over your finger, like so and count about five times. Now that don't have to be too accurate because you're gonna be wrapping this. Just go one, two, one, two, three, four, and five. Then get this piece of end cord and stick it underneath there. Put it through. Go back to your first one, which is your first loose wrap and then just start working that round. Keep that one up there. Like that. Come round again, over. It was easier with the, um, the power cord because obviously it was thicker. Make sure it's nice and tight round there. Keep going round, you'll have a, a loose piece left. Bring that round, like that. And the last one, round. You can see it's underneath about five now. Make sure it's nice and tight at the back. And then pull that there, put it up and there you are then just maybe a little dab of super glue on there just to make sure that, that doesn't move done well okay both ends are now wrapped um and uh yeah it looks great right the way down and there's the other end and now you've got to do the center now you've got to find your center again because obviously you've painted over and although we started with 60 was it 66 inches um, if you measure it now it's it's about 65 and a half now I've just flipped over to metric here and it's 166 so then divide that obviously you've got uh, uh, 83 and mark an 83 center here once you've done that there's your center not that one that's why I thought it was 33 inches and then realized when I measured from there to there it was less than 33 inches so again always pays to double check your measurements now, I've got, uh, when I put my hand over it, it's five inches is plenty uh, for the grip. So I'm going two and a half inches either side of there and then just wrap it exactly the same as you did at the end. Okay, here's a little tip. Um, you can't do this in the workmates because uh, here you could wrap and bring it over the top uh, and keep going down. Uh, but we're in the middle now and that doesn't work. So what you have to do is get plenty of your jute unraveled, okay? Get this on, as you can see, on two boards, so it's suspended. Then here, start with the wrap, and then if you turn the bow away from you, I'll just show. So this, the cord's here. If you're turning this in this direction, then you're always, you're not going to be tangled up. It's coming off here and just keep working your way down like that. So. Now when you get to the end here, remember you started at a five inch mark there. So when you're getting to about four or five wraps, you see your mark just coming up. Don't go to it and then do the wraps, start the wraps here. So cut off a good length. And the good news is I've got enough, um, I got enough out of the 
50 meter uh, for the first one. I did buy another bundle, but I'm not going to have to use it. So over your finger five times and then through and well, it's done. Okay, and the last process now on this jute um, is with a little gas gun. And just use a small one if you've got it. Not a great big industrial thing because we're just going to singe uh, the jute and just get rid of all these hairy bits. And just do it very quickly like that. It won't damage the paint. You see they just come off like that. And then you can literally with your hand just rough it up. It'll bring up more hairs and just keep going at it, but just be very light. And just keep going until all those loose bits and just wrap it up with your hand. I've just taken it out of the um, the workmate actually, it's working better down a flat. Uh, but you can see once you've taken all the fur off, it darkens it off a little bit. It looks nice and, well, I wouldn't say medieval, but it's uh, <laughs> it looks like it's been on there for a while. And so we do the same with the handle and the same with the other end. And then tomorrow we're going to string it up. Well, it's Saturday morning, or uh, nearly afternoon actually, uh, and it's a glorious day. And down here, uh, finally stringing up the longbow. And uh, here we are. What I've done uh, for the actual bracing string, which I put on here, I found that this slipped when I was trying to pull it up. And uh, you'll see from other videos, maybe it uh, grips on, on the proper wood more than it does on here, but it was sliding up. So I put a little clamp here and another clamp on the other end and then that stops this bracing string made out of power cord from sliding up. So when you put your foot under in the middle and pull up, then that pulls down. And I've actually made a test cord just out of Dacron, just to get a rough idea of length. Uh, now I've got a bracing height here of about six inches. So I know it's gonna stretch a little bit. Here's my proper cord here. And uh, that's going to be, once I've taken this off and I can measure this, I've got a rough idea, I can put my knot in this end, then if it starts to stretch, of course, then you just take it off and twist and just tighten it up. And that will shorten the cord. Okay, so I've got everything uh, sort of lined up here and uh, I've got my test cord here, which is pinned down the other end along with my proper one here made of the Dacron. Now, it's come out when I had that six inch brace height uh, at 60, just over 61 inches. So that's where I'm gonna be making my loop for the proper one. And also keep these clamps on and your bracing cord because you're gonna be using that till it's all finished. Uh, what I've done now is I've come back about here and I've just started to counter twist again to get the extra strength down this end. And I've just put a pin in there, just stop whilst I film this. So I'm gonna continue right past here past this old clock weight, which is a handy thing to have, but any sort of strong weight, weights and pins, really good idea for this. Uh, go past here and then make a temporary loop. So I'm gonna be bracing this, looping it round and just wrapping it round itself. Uh, that will hold tight. Don't put a knot in it, just in case, but should be okay. Then once you put the loop in, obviously if it's still then, when it stretches, that extra stretch, you should be able to then just take that up by twisting this and that will hence shorten the cord. Right, so counter twist starts about here. And I've worked right up here, past the loop here, and tied a knot in the end up there. So this can't be undone, but it can still unravel, so keep weight on it. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch here at the point of my test loop and wrap it round. So as I say, don't tie it. And then, um, well, <laughs> let's see. So I've just wrapped it round itself about five times and then I just put a little clamp on there to stop that. Uh, that can't go anywhere. Uh, so it's time to, uh, it's time for the big test. Okay, so the first 61 and a half gave me a brace height of about five inches. So I then shortened it to 61 and it gave me five and a half inches. So I've now got um, 60 and a half, which should give me around six inches. Now that is also then going to stretch, uh, but I should be able to take that up by twisting it. So I've had it on the, uh, on the bow and uh, pulled it a few times and you can see how much it's actually stretched from 60 and a half to 62. So an inch and a half stretch there. So although I said you can take it up with twisting it, I'm still gonna do a few more. Uh, go back to the 60 and a half and until I'm, it, doesn't move much at all. So my brace height is back down to five inches. 
Well, it seems to have settled now. Uh, we've got about seven inch brace height here. Um, I still haven't knotted up. I'm going to do that after lunch. Uh, but uh, at about 60 and a half inches now, uh, maybe 61, just to bring that down a little bit uh, to about six and a half. Um, and it feels pretty good. Um, the only thing is I've measured 16 inches from that end to here and then the height and the same on this end and as i read uh, there could be a variation here and this is actually there's there's, there's a little bit of a difference here this is shallower here than it is there so you always apparently uh, have the highest uh, measurement the biggest curve as the top of the bow well it's done and uh, i've just been around my neighbours and because uh, he's got some heavy scales and uh, tested it and uh, surprisingly only only 30 pounds at about 28 29 inches so that's surprising because um, the old backyard bow you one makes it out of the uh, larger inch and a quarter he reckons that's 80 so I thought the inch wouldn't be a lot less uh, that'll be interesting so I may just have to make one and I don't think it's uh, gonna be so but actually even at 30 pound it's got quite a pull on it so tomorrow when I go to the woods um, I think I'm still gonna have some fun and it's gonna be interesting to see how accurate it is so one final thing uh, I just served the cord there and uh, okay that's the center but you're holding your hand over the center the arrow is just off which is so I've made the server actually center to where the arrow is going to sit so it's nice and square uh, so it really only remains to get out in the woods and test it so I'll hopefully see you there